Okay, winter wheat, variety SY Epson. Um, variety I like, I must admit. I like it because it's generally, it has very good resistance to septoria. And I would also say from the experiences I've had with it and seen with it in the past, it's also reasonably resistant to drought. So I'd be delighted to see it on this kind of land. It probably can offer more than some other varieties can if the, if the land gets pinched later in the season. Um, sown on the 20th of October after winter oats at eight and a half stone per acre or 130 kilos per hectare for those who don't understand that old language uh, and dressed with ready go de terre. Um, ready go de terre again is, is a seed dressing plus the insecticide for aphids and it repels a few other insects as well. Uh, on the 11th of February, because it was a, you know, a, a, an awkward back end, we're back to the first chance for weed control with uh, IPU, three litres, uh, DFF, quarter of a litre, and an insecticide going on at that stage. It's always a, a, a vexed question you've missed in the autumn. You're going out first time in the spring, do you put in an insecticide or not? There is no, there will never be an answer to that question. Uh, sorry, a technical answer to the question. My answer will always be yes if it's been a mild winter because you just don't know and I think with the benefit of hindsight you know there was a reason to do it but, but only the benefit of hindsight would tell you that. Um, so it was a, it, he, there was a reasonable cover though from the fact that the deter was used so there wasn't a major risk but that mild, mild winters always cause that extra difficulty and it, it, arguably there was more pressure in February than there is now. That's just the way it was. Um, on to the 23rd of April then, we're back to uh, T, 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 well, T0 time I'm guessing. Uh, litre of Bravo with Modus and CCC, fairly commonly used all around the country. Um, you might argue that Bravo wouldn't have been needed on a variety like Opus, but on all big farming units you have a range of varieties. You're filling the tank with a mix and that's the way you work and there's nothing wrong with that. There's certainly no downside from having it in there. Uh, potential plus side, but a little bit of flexibility. That's probably what it's buying you. First of May, um, back out with Jules, Gleam and Vertisan. So on Jules is it CT, is Plortalinan, isn't it? Okay. Um, uh, so you have, you have uh, uh, an SDHI, that's the third one. You have your triazoles, which is the middle one, and you have your chlorotalinol or multi-site, and that's the basic makeup of any of the sprays at T1, T2 on wheat. Uh, there's nothing much to say one versus the other. It's a matter to me of using sensible combinations. If some have, some have maybe slight weaknesses, you gotta feel the weakness. You gotta know the product you're using. You gotta take the advice that's being given to you. Um, Fill, fill the gap. I think the one thing at T1, you, if you're going in there looking at uh, disease moving in the crop, and thankfully this year we weren't, and we had a lot of dry conditions this year uh, for a change, thankfully. So we, we didn't have a lot of pressure for the T1s. We arguably have more pressure for T2s. Generally, the crops I walk into are pretty clean, um, but I have seen plenty septoria in some crops, but I wouldn't be prepared to say that I've seen fresh septoria. Moving up the crop, yes but not fresh, as in it hasn't, it's not septori that has just come from an infection that took place three or four weeks ago. I do have a small concern about septoria at the moment, and that is that it's, a lot of people are now kind of three, three and a half, four weeks from the last spray. I don't know what, what's the dates on this one. It's three weeks, just even, so there's no big issue here. But a lot of people went in a shade early with the first spray and you're caught in a situation where you have to fill a gap. And people are coming back and saying, oh, geez, it's clean. You know, there's no, no pressure. I'm worried that the cold conditions, which have slowed the, septori the, the, the growth of the crop, have also slowed the septoria, so that we may still be dealing with pressure that's not visible today when it might normally be visible calendar-wise. So all I'm saying is don't take it for granted. Um, some of you may have read, uh, if, if, if you're a wheat grower, you may have read an article that I had in, in uh, the crop protection magazine there a few weeks ago on some of the new findings on septoria. And to me, they will be significant for a number of reasons. I think because of what has happened in that, I think the researchers will probably end up looking very differently at every other disease now. 
because of what they found with septoria. And very simply what they found was, generally if you look at a crop and you see the disease you're looking for, you say, that's the amount of disease I have. What they found was that you can have the same number of lesions after different treatments, but you can have an awful lot fewer spores produced after one spray versus a different spray. And if fewer spores are produced, the disease is less able to multiply within the crop. Does that make sense? Because it's just less, it's the same as having three weeks of dry weather, less pressure. That's really what it does. And that could have a fundamental change because if you can do that at T1, you, you can subsequently reduce the pressure on your crop for a time like now, which is the time, a more awkward time always. May showers, you know, it, it's not, this is not the first year we've had a wet May. And it, it, it can relieve the pressure. There's another, there's another element to, to it that I just want to mention. And it doesn't really matter whether you're a barley grower or a wheat grower. The other thing that's becoming more, more sorry, better understood is that when disease infection occurs, and it doesn't really matter which disease now, I, I think, I think it'll apply for them all. When infection occurs, depending on whether you get one spore infecting or a hundred spores infecting, obviously if, if a hundred infect versus one, you have a lot more fungus growing in the crop. That makes sense? Because they're after infecting and they're getting in. Traditionally, we to you were told that from the point of infection to the point of the disease reappearing is a matter of temperature. It's driven by temperature. Now they're saying, no, that's not the full story. Disease will appear much quicker in this, the leaf that was infected a hundred times than it will in the leaf that's infected once, with, just with one spore. Because there's a relationship in the plant. It was discovered first a couple of years ago with fusarium, you know, the head blight, that fusarium lives in the plant most of the year through. You, you saw me talking about it in the oats. And I believe it still happens in the wheat. It, it, infection occurs early and generally it grows up. For that reason, I've always been of the view, if you want fusarium, then you pour on growth regulator. Because the fungus can keep growing and the crop gets short. You just allow it to get up there faster. Okay, I've been of that contention for years and years and years. We've seen field examples of it for years. So you, you have to be careful always w about overcooking nitrogen and say you throw on growth regulator because you make a new problem. Anyway, what they discovered there is that you have fusarium growing in the crop all the time. And, and it's perfect harmony. No, nobody getting any symptoms or jumping up and down or staying awake all night or anything else going wrong. And then all of a sudden something happens. Now we're all told that infection for fusarium all comes in from the outside in a wet year. I have little doubt that that's part, that does occur, particularly for micro, Microdochium nivale, which is just one of the big family that's there. But Microdochium nivale is a completely different animal to Fusarium, any of the Fusariums, because it's like Septoria or Rinko, it grows on the leaf. You can see the symptoms. You'll see the symptoms generally during the year. And it grows up the outside. That's why Amistar, when it worked, was so good at preventing that disease because it grew up the outside and you can stop something that's growing on the outside. It's a lot more difficult to stop stuff that's growing on the inside. Anyway, in the work with, with the fusarium, they've discovered that this harmony breaks down for some reason. And only this spring, researchers in the UK announced that they'd found a gene that was responsible for breaking the harmony between the fungus and the plant. And that type of, of research is now what we will be depending on for the future. The things that people are finding and whether or not then we will be allowed to use these things to breed the new varieties that we will depend on before our fungicides break down completely. That is my worry because you know there are, you'll, you'll find nobody in the business who will say that fungicides will not break down. Everything we've had will break, has broken down bar one particular family and it's only a matter of time most likely that when it'll break as well. And if you're a wheat grower, you know the problem. If you're a barley grower, you say, thank God, it's not me, it's the other fella. It's no different. Barley is not one bit different. I mean, I'm, 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 I've already told you that we're seriously worried about some of the things we're seeing this year because they do not make sense in terms of active fungicides. So, you know, you, you can't take it for granted. We, we have to become, I'll use it again, better farmers. 
Try and get, do things that get rid of the pressure of reinfection. The stubble, the trash that's sitting there over winter. Last winter, we left all the stubbles because you had to for green, for, for green cover. We left all of the stubbles there over winter. So whatever disease is built on them, they're there again to infect in the spring. We can blame the legislators for it, but as a, as a farmer, you're the one that has to endure the cost of it, both short term and long term, if we lose the tools that we depend on. So just th those comments in passing. Did I go through all this? I did, almost. Nitrogen 180 kilos, that's 150 units, uh, uh, and P and K as required through the field. So, you know, that, that's where we are. Um, uh, the, the big dilemma that a lot of people have had for the last week odd uh, was the fact that the, the early fungicides on wheat went on, sorry, the first fungicides, T1 application, went on marginally early, and then everything slowed down. And all of a sudden you had three and four weeks gone by the flag leaf still wasn't out. If you ha had a day, you could spray. And what do you do? And it's a real dilemma for people when that happens. And there's no, there's no kind of right answer to the question. People did different things. Some people put on a litre of Bravo and hoped that it would just carry you for, to stop infection on the top of the crop over the next seven to 10 days. Other people would have taken the, the T2 they were going to use, split it, put out more rate in total, and just to, to, to put out what you had on half the flag leaf and then to come back seven days later and spray the whole lot again and you're spraying all the flag leaf with a lesser rate and a good dose of Bravo in the process. So there, there is no right and there's no wrong in what you do, uh, but you kind of know that when in broken weather, if you get a window, you gotta go. And just to make a sensible decision, like I would always say that between Fungicide program A, B, C, and D, there's probably 0.1 of a ton and 50 pence an acre in the difference in the profit. You know, it's not big differences you talk about, but it's what gets all the conversation, and yet we're missing a ton an acre before we start because of the fact that we have done nothing about the soil that we're beginning with. But disease control does matter, it's, and it's important to be sensible about it. We, we can lose the products that we have. That's a statement, it's not, a, not an opinion. We definitely can lose them, and very soon. Hopefully we won't. Having low disease pressure years is a huge bonus. Last year was a terrific bonus for Irish growers because there was so little septoria pressure for most of the year, and it's the septoria pressure that, that generates the resistance. So I, everything that we can do to reduce the pressure, m the, the, the biggest single one for most crops is watching planting data. The, the way to get septoria on a crop is planted early. So if you have to plant early because of acreage, because of soil types and other things, for God's sake, try and get a variety that's pretty resistant. And if there's a theoretical one, two or 3% yield tag on it, yield relative to the best, ignore it because you're still taking an option that's securing your long-term future much more so than having to, to fight disease with four and five fungicides in the following seasons.